My opinion is that tennis clubs should want to adopt the national tennis policies because by adopting the policies that are already set there by people who are paid to do this and also are able to establish policies across the span of a broader network, well, it's almost a no-brainer of why wouldn't you do it? Because that makes it easier for you and gives you more time back in your, your day as a volunteer to enjoy your club. Well, constitutions and bylaws are just key for incorporated bodies. So our tennis clubs are all incorporated, so they have to have a constitution. The constitution being the legal structure of the club, they can be changed only in accordance with the Act. So they have to be changed at a general meeting of the members of the club. The bylaws should be as the lesser set of rules for the club, running governing administrative process or sporting rules, they should be under the control of the board. So the board could change them at any time. Uh, we need model rules, constitutions and bylaws to ensure that we can protect our members. Uh, it's, a, it's a legal document that we can abide by and to ensure that all members um, are fair and equitable. Uh, it's consistent uh, for all that are involved to ensure that we can refer to it where necessary. It's a document that clubs use um, and should refer to quite regularly and it really incorporates um, their visions, their, their purposes, elements of strategy but also some really key elements in regards to um, annual general meetings. So it's important for clubs to uh, regularly look at their, their constitution or their, their model rules uh, regularly and to, to change them it's really important to identify the areas that you'd like to change. So going through your rules articulating and understanding um, some key areas that you want to change, whether it's something political, it's something um, legalities wise, or it's some wording. And to adjust that, um, it's important that your committee adopt it and understand it, um, that it's talked about at those meetings. And then you get um, specialist services to support you. So whether it's a legal firm, it's your local or state, um, local or state government, or it's your um, sporting body. So Tennis Victoria or Tennis Australia. Tennis Victoria particularly has invested a lot of time in developing resources and there's a terrific template constitution that Tennis Victoria has. The, the model rules are okay, but they need to be tailored for each organisation. Too many incorporated associations still just fill in the blanks in the model rules and then file it as their constitution. Uh, AGMs are uh, needed and, and a requirement for all clubs to ensure that there's, um, there's consistency within clubs, that everyone has a chance to uh, provide um, their voice, but also an opportunity to raise key themes around the club moving forward um, and to have considerations around club uh, officials and, and committee roles that are, that are involved. Quorum um, is a key element of any um, AGM or any um, special meeting, and that is the member's ability to, uh, to vote and cast their vote. Um, and they can be in person or they don't necessarily need to, um, to attend the meeting as long as they provide their vote um, within a timely manner. Um, a quorum is something that every club should have written into their constitution and every club will have a different percentage of um, people that need to attend uh, AGM or a, or a special meeting. So under consumer affairs, um, the club reporting requirements are um, the key, key steps around that are um, financial statements to ensure that clubs well and truly hold their financial statements for a long period of time um, and to ensure that their minutes are well and truly um, adopted, their minutes are saved and their minutes are, are folded uh, somewhere close by. Um, this is to ensure that uh, if any disputes come forward uh, and if an audit uh, is taken place, the club has the files and the information present that they can provide. How was it that we dealt with that? Well, firstly, there was a lot of heated arguments and stuff on the way, <laughs> so it wasn't always smooth. Um, but that was when we reached out to things, um, club development officer at, at Tennis Victoria, as a sounding board as well, not as the cop coming in here, you know, but actually how to asking those questions about how do clubs do this and how do we actually help navigate it reaching out to people in our community as well and, and being open and transparent with each other about the fact that we did have a problem and having those conversations as well and sometimes getting out of the busy of all of the multiple things that you're trying to do and know that this is really important because if you don't fix it then you're not actually going to be able to do the rest of the things as a committee as well. So having those conversations, the healthy open conversations with each other in a space that's respectful, not just butting heads, having some empathy and trying to understand each other, 
And, and this comes into, I say this in a, a workplace as well as in a volunteering space, you know, assuming goodwill from people in those conversations as well. So taking that breather back um, to get out of the, that person did this and that person meant that and assuming all of these things, but instead actually just stepping back and assuming goodwill from individuals and go, well, people make decisions based on their own context. But I think that this is where clubs have to be a bit kind to themselves as well and know that things will come up and then know that, you know, you just need to reset and just move on, adapt, deal with that thing, reach out for help, don't try and do it all yourself, be realistic about what you need to achieve and then actually just, you know, get the advice, adapt, move on.